The Alexandrians came flocking to see Cleopatra's children, Alexander, Ptolemy, Caesarion, her pretty sons. It was quite a holiday. They all trooped off to the field of exercise with music, marching, singing, horses, chariots and banners. There, in front of the cheering army, such a shout went up from deep-voiced men, such a rattle of harness chains from bucking, stamping steeds. The boys were hailed as kings. Alexander Helios, hurrah, hurrah, by public proclamation now became sole master of Armenia, Parthia and Syria an enormous sprawling land mass for one small shy boy. Ptolemy Philadelphus, hooray, hooray, laughing and gurgling, happily clutched Syria, Phoenicia, Cilicia in his little dimpled podgy arms. Caesarion, the eldest of the boys, son of conquering Caesar, stood to the fore, his robe pink-tinted silk, sweet-smelling hyacinths pinned to his breast, above a blazing belt richly studded with amethysts and sapphires. Stiffened white ribbons sewn with rosy pearls tied his leather shoes. Greater than his brothers, eldest of the three, it had been decided to name him King of Kings. The cynical Alexandrians, of course, the worldly Alexandrians, were aware that this was all just talk. Nonetheless, the day was like a poem, a warm idyll, the pale blue sky diaphanous above the field of exercise, the courtiers glittering with jewels and gold, Caesarion himself, a graceful long-legged beauty of a youth, blessed with his mother's beauty, her in the boy. The Alexandrians loved it, loved it all, laughing and cheering, throwing up their arms, shouting in Greek and Egyptian and in Hebrew, enchanted by the spectacle. Although, of course, they had a shrewd idea, they knew a thing or three, of the true worth of these sounding titles, these somewhat fly-blown kingships.